your capacity. Limits God's best. Not God's capacity. God's got so much to give you. But your own capacity is your limit this morning. And that's what I want to speak to you about. So Deuteronomy 28 verse 2 says, Obey the Lord your God and all the blessings, and all the blessings will be yours. He doesn't say, he doesn't talk about capacity at all. He says all the blessings will be yours. So how does the capacity differ then? We cause the capacity difference. But he says, The Lord will bless your towns and your fields. Your towns and your fields. The Lord will bless you with many children, with abundant crops, with many cattle and sheep. The Lord will bless you with grain, crops and food and prepare for them, from them. The Lord will bless everything you do. Everything you do. You might not be in farming, but everything you do. My Bible says the Lord will bless you in everything. Everything you do. So why am I not blessed then? My capacity for blessing is the problem. And my capacity for blessing, my brother and sister, can be for many, many other reasons than specifically financials. But I'm bringing you a financial prosperity uh, message this morning. I want you to be financially prosperous. The Lord your God will make you a leader not he says, and he will make you a leader among the nations and not a follower. You will lead on the subject of, on, on, on social media. You will lead. You won't be a follower. You will put down the message of God and the people will follow you because you are, God is calling you as a leader. What's the problem then? Why can't we be leaders? Each of us have the capacity to do that. No, we don't. Because our capacity differs. Each of us in our capacity differs. The Lord will make you a leader among nations, not a follower. You will always prosper and never fail if you... And then there's the problem. Now the capacity, God speaks to capacity. If you obey faithfully all His commands that I give you today. So there's the capacity. If you obey... So the Christian foundation for success, and I've got the five S's that I want to bring to you this morning, and the first one is to share. The first S you need to look at is to share. The next is to scrutinize, to analyze, to fix, to make sure that we can fix. The, when you have a problem at home, do you just go and fix the problem? If you've got a, a leaking toilet, do you just go and fix the problem? Now, some of you call someone else because you don't have the capacity to fix it. But what I'm saying is, but if you have to fix it yourself, you will first go and have a look where it's leaking. You will have a look why it's leaking. You will look what's required to fix it. You will buy what you need to fix it, and then you will fix it, isn't it? So you need to scrutinize the problem. Every problem we have, we need to scrutinize first. You need to analyze it and to bring it to that. Then you need to systemize it. Now, systemization means I need to put it into an order. And it should become part of my daily order. It should become part of who I am and part of what I do. I systemize it into my system. The third point is then I need to work at sustaining what I've put in place. So in other words, I need to sustain what I've put in place so that I, need to, I will be able to contain the capacity of the blessing that God's given me. And last but not least, I need to save and be saved. Save and be saved. But then I get to God's if. Now I get to Moses' law's if. This is the capacity problem. And you all think uh, curses are brought about by other people? No. Sometimes you bring curses upon yourself. Deuteronomy 28 verse 15 on my next slide says, But if you disobey the Lord your God and do not faithfully keep His commandments and laws I am giving you today, all these evil things will happen to you. The Lord will curse your towns and your fields. Boom. Everything the opposite. The Lord will curse your grain, cups, and food you prepare for them. 
The Lord will curse you by giving you only a few children, poor crops and few cattle and few sheep. The Lord will curse everything you do. So you've got the capacity for blessing and then you, you drill down to this little cup here, you break it all up and then I say, I feel cursed. Why? Because you decreased the capacity of blessing that God wanted to bring upon your life. You yourself, no one else, you yourself decreased the capacity of blessing because you broke your cup. And your barrel needs to be filled up this morning and it needs to be, uh, to be built back. So let's start with kingdom sharing then. If you go to the sharing side then, so what am I doing wrong? Well, my brother and sister, there's a couple of things that you could be doing wrong. Because sharing, if I start with sharing, the first thing is tithing. Now, many people say tithing is for the Old Testament. Well, I've got a surprise for you. Tithing is for the New and the Old Testament. Tithing is for the child of God. Because that's my thankfulness. That's what I give God back. And my brother and sister, when you give God back, you will always receive. If you give, you receive. If you don't give, well, then you open for a destruction of your capacity. It brings it down. Offerings, charity, gifts, experience, prayer, and time. That's all sharing. My brother and sister, when I take time and I share it with my brother and sister so that I can build them up, what am I doing? I'm sharing. It's not all about money. It's about giving. It's about sharing. If I share my faith with someone, I'm sharing. If I share my finances with God and with someone and with the church and that, I am sharing. If I share my gifts that I have with someone, I'm sharing. If I give someone a gift, I'm sharing. What does God want you to do? He starts because why? God shared His Son with you. If we look at the communion, God shared His Son with you and He never held anything back God gave the full capacity of Jesus Christ to the church. The full capacity. But what has the church done? The church has decreased the capacity of God to know because they broke it. They broke the vessel. They, the church, broke the vessel. You see, my brother and sister, if I look at the limiting capacity here, the problem is the limiting or the capacity of prosperity on the church is the church's work to fix it. The people, the members in the church need to fix the capacity so that God can bless. Blessings must come. Blessings must be more. We should be blessing one another more. You see, this is what it's about. So if you look at your current positioning of thought around what God wants to do, and your positioning around where God wants to use you, then things work. Look at your tithing history. I want to ask you what your tithing history is this morning. I never do this in the church. I've never done it before, but I want to ask you that this morning. If you have to scrutinize that, what is your tithing history this morning? What vows have you made to God that you haven't gone and accomplished? Because all of that is causing the limit on your blessing this morning. You promised God something. If God does this for you, you'll do that for God. Come on. We've all done that. Tithing was one of the promises I made when I was in a real bad state. I made God a promise and I said, God, I will never, ever keep back my tithing because if you can help me out of this big problem I had, and I had a big problem, At that time I vowed, I'll never forget, I vowed in Doxadeo, I was sitting in Doxadeo and I said, Lord, if you help me out of this problem now, I was going to lose my job. I said, if you can help me out of this problem, then I will pay my tithes. I know I haven't paid till now, but I will pay my tithes. Guess what? A week later, I was transferred as a contractor. I could take 
I think it was something like 10 or 12 contractors with me that I could pay. I bought their toolboxes. Everything just worked out. Everything and God gave me a business in a question of two weeks. But what did I have to do? I had to take the capacity. I had to fill it up with a, with a promise so that I could contain the capacity of God. The capacity of God. My brother and sister, if you don't put God on your budget, forget it. You'll never pay your tithe. If you don't put your car on your budget, your car's payment on your budget, do you leave your car payment off your budget? Well, it's very careless if you do, isn't it? But you don't put God on your budget. Then you want God to bless. You want God to fill up this capacity. You want Him to give you everything. But then you leave Him off your budget. Wow. You're limiting the capacity of prosperity. Malachi 3 verse 8 says, I ask you, it is right for a person to cheat God. Of course not. Yet you are cheating me. How? You ask in the matter of tithes and offerings. A curse is on all of you because of the whole nation that is cheating me. The whole of the church is cheating me. Who's played Monopoly before? Come on. Do you like it when somebody cheats? And can you see when somebody's cheated? Yes, you can. You're not stupid. Does God know what your salary pay slip is? Of course He does. We want Him to bless it. Lord, bless me with a good salary. Does God know what's on my pay slip? Oh, yes, He does. Oh, yes, he does. Difficult words I have with you. I've been doing some difficult messages and I'm, I apologize for, for touching the sore spots this morning. But when God gives me a message, I have to do that. And especially when he speaks to me in a dream. So let's scrutinize blessing this morning. I want you to look at the staves of a barrel. And, and if you look at my previous slides where I had the barrel there, you'll see there's different staves of the barrel. And, and the lowest stave is your capacity. So in other words, the lowest stave is the capacity that you will have, that you will ever have. And I'm going into deeper things this morning as well. So, so what I'm saying is, I want you this morning to leave with one thing, that I'm going to take the lowest stave and increase it to the highest so that I can contain the blessings of God, that I can bring more blessing in and I can have and contain what God actually wants to give me. I want you to think this morning what your current level of blessing is. Are you actually blessed? You think you're blessed. You wake up in the morning. But I'm asking you this morning, if you had to be blessed at the full capacity of God, how good and how best will you be blessed? If God had to give you everything this morning and say, wow, there it is. The kings will look after you. God blesses that way. God gave me, years back, God gave me a scripture and he said the kings will look after you. You know what, brother and sister? I've been CEO's officers all of my life. And CEO's have looked after me all of my life. Why? Because God gave me a scripture. He said the kings will look after you. The kings will look after you. Today, I speak to the kings or the rulers of this country. I speak to them. I speak to those at high levels. God has given me the position to do that. But my brother and sister, it takes your planning and your change to accept the capacity so that you can move into that area and that realm where God can bless you. Do you want that this morning? You asked me for a recipe. If you ask me for a recipe to build something, I have to give you the recipe. If I give you the wrong thing, you will build the wrong thing. What is your financial status this morning, my brother and sister? And if it's bad, it needs to be fixed. God can fix it. But you need to fix the drum so that God can fill the drum. 
If you don't fix the drum, if you don't fix your barrel this morning, it can't be filled. It'll run away. Right over the side, as I've demonstrated. What is currently God's share in your life this morning? I'm not just speaking money this morning. I'm asking you, do you actually put God first in everything you do? Because if you put Him first in everything you do, you put Him first in money anyway. So I'm taking you to your potential this morning, and this is where I want to say the, the lowest bar determines your capacity this morning, and this is the better picture to look at. You see, if you put all the things that you do in, in perspective this morning, your preparing, your education, the love, the joy, you might have a lot of joy. You might have those at the highest staves. They might be your, your potential capacity might lie there at the highest level. But because you've got this lower one here, that is where you have to start scrutinizing and preparing to fix. Your career may be at 80%, but brother and sister, it can contain 80% of blessing. But because you're not right with God, you can only contain 20% of the blessing. Your marriage and the level of your marriage might be at 70%, my brother and sister, and that might be contained. But the other things you do might be at 20%. And your stay is so low. You might have all the gifts of the Spirit this morning. But the bottom part here stops the Spirit of God working through you. Why? Because you might have the gifts, but you can't contain the blessing. The container is broken. And you need to fix the container so that God can really start working and that you can contain more. And that you can give more. The more you contain, the more you can give, the more you can be used. You've got so much potential, my brother and sister. You might have the right attitude. But your holiness could be there. You might have the biblical knowledge greater than anyone else. But the small thing, the hole in the bucket makes the biblical knowledge null. Why? Because your reputation is down there. You see, my brother and sister, if we had to wrap this salvation wrapper around us and just bring it much higher, and higher the level of what we do, God will help us. So when you systemize this morning, and I said that we analyze and then we systemize, so we scrutinize and then we go and we systemize. The first thing I want to ask you, what is Jesus' time in your life this morning? And I speak to myself as well. What is Jesus' time in your day? When you systemize, your day must start with Jesus, isn't it? Come on. Somehow we've got to fix this. And how should it start? When we systemize Jesus' time. Number one, daily prayer, daily Bible study, a daily testimony. A daily testimony means when I walk, I walk what I talk. And people see my testimony in what I do and how I do it. It could be your weekly offering. It could be your monthly tithing. It could be your monthly debt that you're taking down. Because remember... He who you owe, owns you. Do you hear what I'm saying? He who you owe, owns you. Why? Because that organization or that person steers you with the money you owe them. You cannot have that. So if there's ever something that I should call upon the church to stop, and that's to make debt. Some debts we can't stop, like buying a house. I suppose that's one of those we can call an investment. But when you're doing silly debt, you get silly debt, and then you get investment. 
And then periodic charity, my brother and sister, you know what? God has called us to share with the poor. We need to do that. God wants you to do that. I believe we need to, to teach the poor to fish as well so that we can help them and take them up. Malachi 3 verse 10 says, Bring the full amount of your tithes to the temple so that there will be plenty food there. Why? Because if we have plenty food here, we can supply plenty. And then he says, this is the only place. Did you know that this verse in the Bible is the only verse in the Bible where God says, you may test me. Everywhere else, even Jesus said to Satan, you may not test God. The only place that's ever mentioned in the Bible that says you may test God is Malachi 3 verse 10. He says, put me to the test. And you will see that I will open the windows of heaven and pour out on you in abundance all kinds of good things if your capacity can handle it. All kinds of good things. Stop cheating God. So what I'm saying to you this morning is you can have these two battles. You can have the normal old battle that you've had with the capacity that's there and you can continue going, no problem. But you need to start, if you want prosperity, you need to budget for blessing. You need to budget for blessing. You need to invest for blessing. Do you see what I'm saying? You need to up the bar. You need to open your capacity up so that God can fill. When we sustain the kingdom, the sustaining part is your budget versus your income. My brother and sister, don't make silly mistakes. I can speak on many things. Many years back when I was a young man, I was, I was under the age of 30, I think it was about 25, and I also hadn't paid tithes for a long time, and I was in a service like this where the pastor was preaching tithing, and I said, Lord, uh, I, I apologize for this. And I took out my checkbook and I didn't have any money in the bank and I wrote out a smart check where I had the three months tithing that I was behind. I put on the check as well. And what happened? It was silly. The check bounced. God doesn't play games. You can't cheat God. Don't do silly things. That's all I'm saying. It cost me to pay the three month tithes in cash. So I learned my lesson anyway because it bounced and then I was embarrassed. I had to go to the church and say, okay, I'll give you the money and I had to give the money in cash. You see what happened, brother and sister? All experience. I can speak to you about experiences that I've had with this. But you need to sustain yourself by avoiding debt. I've spoken to that. And then I need you to consider a return on investment. I want to give you, this is not biblical, this is common sense. If you buy something and you invest something, there must be a return on that. You buy this, come on. I must know why I'm buying this. And I'm, it needs to return something that I can use. Otherwise, it's of no use investing in it. Understand what I'm saying? A car, by the way, my brother and sister, and my brothers will all agree with me, is not an investment. It's a mode of transport. Unless it's a Ferrari. Who've got, who's got Ferraris here? No one? Because they haven't got the money to invest in it. Something that's not an investment is not an investment and you need to consider the return on your investment. Everything you put your money into, the blessings of God into, must give you a return. Come on, let's be sensible about this. So if you have something that you're going to invest in, 
it needs to give you or someone else something back. And you need to sustain that. In this circle, I've got one thing here, and I say I can be financially successful. And I want you to repeat that with me. I can be, say that, I can be financially successful. I've got the capacity to be financially successful. I've got the capacity. I may not have it now, but boy, oh boy, I'm working towards it. You agree with me? How are we going to do that? Back to our battle. You've got three levels of your battle. The first level is your sustainable level that's within the span of your control, my brother and sister. That's where your faith, your prayer, and your budget lies. That is where you can increase this to a next level. It's within the span of your control. Your capacitated level, my brother and sister, is where you've got principles, you've got your salvation, your band, your principle band, your salvation band. God has given all that to you, and you've got your budget. Your budget is not only about money. It's about containing the full capacity of blessing that God wants to put upon you. We've all got the visionary level, and the visionary level is normally driven by faith, by faith and that's me. I'm, I'm very visionary, and I, I drive it by faith, but I've still got the budget to contend with. I have this vision, but I have this budget. What's my capacity? Where my budget is. If you take God out of your budget, your budget's much lower. Where you are now, my brother and sister, you can be much, much higher. You can contain much, much more blessing if you just had to fix that small little hole. Matthew 19, 20 says, I, and this is a young man, it's a rich young man that comes to Jesus and he says, I have obeyed all the commandments. The young man replied, what else do I need to do? Think about this. The young man is here. Jesus says to him, you can fill your full cup. You can have the full cup. He says to him, how? So Jesus says to him, if you want to be perfect, go and sell all that you have. Now, think about this. This guy's got a mansion, and he's got a lot of money, and he's got a lot of everything, and, and he doesn't have a need of anything. Go and sell all you have and give it to the poor, and you will have riches in heaven, and then come and follow me. And then come and follow me. So sell all that you have and then follow me. Then you can be perfect. When the young man heard this, he went away sad because he was very rich. And then Jesus says to his disciples, I assure you it will be very hard for rich people to enter the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because they don't have to worry about this. They have it all. They don't need to pray. They don't need to contain God's blessing. They've got it all. For a moment. For a moment. Why? Because when I get to my next point, save, saving for tomorrow, it starts with eternity. The rich young man may have everything now. He might have sold his soul for riches. But he won't have eternal life. All think of a holiday. I want you all to think of a holiday quickly. The best holiday you've ever had. Just think of the best holiday you've ever had. Quickly. Just everybody. The best holiday you've ever had. Was it longer than two weeks? Okay. Was it longer than two weeks? No. The best holiday you've ever had. The best holiday you've ever had. Two weeks. Okay. Take two weeks and put it into 70 years. How much is that? Two weeks, the best holiday you've ever had. Two weeks, put it into 70 years. What percentage of the 70 years is it? A memory. You know what? Life 
in eternity will just be a memory. Did you hear what I said? Life in eternity is going to be but a memory. You are just going to remember it. That's all. And now we want to be prosperous on earth. We want to bring everything together. <coughs> Different slant. My bucket, isn't it? <coughs> the saving grace of God is first and foremost for heaven. And all the investment I make on earth, all the investment, my first priority must be to go to heaven. First priority must be to go to heaven. Second one is to fill the storehouses of heaven so that God can provide all the blessing that I can contain. The third point here is, then you look at a pension. Many people have been careless about that too, but you'll need it. Then you look at other investments, and you look at other things that you can do. That's the way that you save. You need to save for tomorrow. Jesus comes today, your savings are no. Doesn't mean anything. If Jesus comes tomorrow, your savings mean nothing. But if Jesus doesn't come for 40 years, your savings may mean that you may need them. Did you hear what I said? We mustn't be careless about saving for tomorrow. I want you to say after me, I can be financially successful. My last slide is analyzing your barrel. The only 100% stave that you and I have that we can cling to is grace, God's grace. The 100% stave that I and you and I can cling to, thank you very much, that we can cling to is grace. God's grace is what helps. Lucky I got the full glass. The full capacity, thank you. You didn't break the glass before you built it. Your budget, my brother and sister, the way you budget on earth for life, is the containing of your blessing. And that, my brother and sister, is probably about 20%. You only contain about 20% of God's blessing. Why? Because you've never been interested in increasing the volume of the bucket. Maybe you have. Say if your faith is around... 89%, you still have to fix this. If you have a love level of about 75%, my brother, and 70, 70, then you still have to fix this. If you have biblical knowledge, my brother and sister, it can take you nowhere if you haven't fixed this. If you have got a career, it can take you nowhere if you haven't fixed this. I want you to take communion this morning knowing that God has given you a full capacity at the start of your life, a full capacity. God gave you it all. What you've done to your vessel and what other people have done to your vessel may look like this this morning and may not all be of your cause. But today is the day to fix it. Because if you can fix it, you can contain so much more of God's blessing. And my message to you this morning is, you need to be a prosperous church. We need to be a prosperous nation. We need to be prosperous people. And the only way we can do that is by containing God's blessings because He wants to give them to us. Your prayer life will help. But it's faith, action, and prayer. The action is what happens here. What are you going to do 
when you leave this place today with the word that I've given you today. You've got some things to go and do yourself. I can't do them for you. God can't do them for you. God can fill your vessel, but God can't fix the things that you have to fix. He can help you fix them. What has to be fixed this morning? You know, I know, I know myself, what I have to do, those small little things. I just know something, don't cheat God. And you don't, it's not about money. God knows everything. You can cheat God in many ways. Don't cheat God. It brings curse. Nobody wants curse this morning. Everybody wants blessing. The splendor of the King Glow in majesty Let all the earth rejoice all the earth rejoices. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice. Trembles at his voice. How great is our God? Sing with me, how great. Our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God.